Right, so after some issues with the direct drive approach in Raptor 1, I've decided to move straight on to Raptor 2. One of the first things I'll be working on is 3D printed gearing. To see if this is even feasible, I've put together a test rig so that I can test the 3D printed gears along with the motors that I'll be using. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and I'll show you what I've designed. As you can see, I've designed a rig that can hold two motors. The objective of testing this is to identify any problem areas before I design the car. The gear ratio I've gone for is five to one. This should comfortably provide enough power for the weight of the vehicle. The good thing as well is that I can change this to a ratio of three to one or four to one in the future, depending on how the car performs. I opted for the dual helical design because it offers maximum power transfer and distributes the load more evenly throughout the gears. This is important because the gears will be printed in PETG plastic and are typically more vulnerable to breaking. Helical gears do produce a larger axial force than straight cut gears, so it's important to design a rigid housing that can handle those kind of loads. To add rigidity and reduce friction, I decided to opt with roller bearings instead of typical ball bearings. Roller bearings provide a larger contact between the bearing and the shaft. This makes everything more rigid and tight, with the only real drawback being slightly more friction. So here's everything printed and installed into place. Everything was really tight, nice and snug. And you can see if I rotate the spur gear here, you can see the motor rotating. So as I mentioned before, it's a five to one ratio. So one rotation of the spur gear gives you five rotations of the motor. And that in turn generates more torque at the wheels. So the whole idea behind this is that I can independently drive each wheel. And I'm still gonna be able to do that by taking this approach. So you know, I'm still sending my own PWM signals and each motor still has its own ESC, but I can still control each of those using a microcontroller. The only difference is I've now got a lot more power and I'll be able to do a lot more fun stuff with the car really. So let's connect this thing up to the microcontroller and see what happens. So the next thing I'm going to be focusing on now is how to design the rest of the car around this power unit. So this here is not going to get any smaller. When I designed this, I, you know, I wanted to keep it as compact as possible, but it also needs a really good frame to keep it rigid and stable. So this isn't really going to be able to change very much. So what I'm going to have to do is build the car around this. That means that I'm going to have to have slightly shorter suspension arms, so it's going to be kind of more like a real car, I guess. Um, but the only downside to that is less suspension travel, which isn't ideal, especially if it's going to be an off-roader, but it's not the end of the world either, especially for version one. So I think the goal really is just, just to get something that moves, something that works, and just test out this all-wheel drive concept, you know, and, and whether I'm able to control all this using the microcontroller. So hopefully you enjoyed the testing, I know I did, um, and you can look forward to some more videos where this starts to come together and, and starts to look more like uh, an actual car. So to kind of conclude what I've done here, I'd, I'd say 3D printing gears is definitely feasible, but we won't know how they actually perform until I do some testing on the car and put it under some real stress. Worst case scenario, I can just send the files off to be 3D printed in metal, or I can just buy some gears off a shelf. I don't think I'm gonna to need to do that because with a few adjustments to the housing and the addition of some silicon lubricant, I think this is gonna work just fine. What I'll be working on for the next week or two is designing the subframe 
and suspension around this gearing setup. So that's it for this one. If you've got any questions or suggestions, please leave them below. I'd appreciate that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.